If you're a newbie, start here. Start basic. G'day from Australia. I'm Donna and I've been teaching and creating art since the 70s. This is a beginner's tutorial on how to make a junk journal. Today, I'm going to make a junk journal that I like and then you can make it the way you like. You're probably saying, that's okay for you Donna, but how do I know which one to start with? You won't know with 100% certainty, but if you watch too many videos, because there's way too many ways to make a junk journal, beginners tell me all the time, if they watch too many videos, they get overwhelmed and don't start at all. I want you to start with this one here, even if it's not the one you're most passionate about, even if you don't like vintage, it's the process I'm showing you. The process is still the same. I'm gonna use old book pages for the cover. You can use a pretty scrapbook cardstock. I'll show you what you need to get, then step-by-step step how to make your junk journal. I encourage you to make a journal no matter what your excuse for not starting one before now is. Once you get the hang of it, it gets easier. And to help you know what I'm talking about throughout these videos, I've created an ebook. I'm so excited about this ebook. It's a junk journal glossary. It's got the meaning of the words related to junk journaling. It'll help you understand better what we're talking about when we talk about junk journals. It will hands down improve your knowledge about junk journaling. It's just like a normal dictionary, only it's about junk journaling. Look up the word and there's the meaning. And you can get it in my online shop right now, but you're free to say no. Everything goes smoothly when you understand the process. And best of all, you won't procrastinate constantly. This is what you're going to need to do. Believe you can do it. Believe you can create. Step one is to get you started while you're excited. So let's get started. Should I start with the cover or the pages? You can start with either. But I will say this, either way, you have to decide what size journal you want to make. So you may as well start with the cover. The journal we're making is eight and a half inches by five inches. That's 210 by 128 millimeters. I'm using book pages to make this journal and they're all from Facebook Marketplace as well as from the charity shop. The first one is this Woman's Weekly Home Journal. I'm going to fussy cut these ladies off the cover. And the second one is the index page out of this large atlas. And this paper is quite firm, so it's perfect for a cover. If you're not familiar with coffee dye paper, all you do is you get your hot water, put it in a bowl, put about a tablespoon of coffee in that hot water, dissolve it and paint it on the book page, both sides, leave it flat and wait for it to dry. If you want to try a different cover, check out this video here on how to make journal covers 10 ways. It's a good one for you as a beginner. I'm showing you these digitals because as a beginner, you might not have collected any books yet. Just get on Etsy and buy some digitals. These are digitals from Christie Art Designs and you just fussy cut them out and you can use these instead of old book pages and they look fabulous on a cover or for the inside pages you can use them anywhere it's time to size it i'm going to fold my journal front over at around about five inches and a smidget more so five and one eighth of an inch 
and I'm going to crease it with my finger. Then I'm going to turn it over and what you can do here is the leftover piece in my right hand, you can cut that off and you're just left with the front and the back cover. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it back on itself so that it's the same size as the front and I'm going to crease it with my finger. And then I'm going to turn it back over so the front is facing me. I'm going to open it up. So now you've got the front cover on the left, the back cover in the middle, and the leftover piece on the right. Like I said, you can cut that leftover piece off so you just got a front and a back, or I can shorten that leftover piece and turn it into a, a little pocket on the back cover. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to flip it all the way over because I'm right-handed and it's easier for me to use my ruler this way. I shorten that bit there. Now later on in the tutorial, I'm going to glue that down. Now I'm going to work out how high I want my journal. I'm going to make it eight and a quarter inches high. I know when I started the video I said eight and a half, but I've ended up making this eight and a quarter. So I'll cut a little bit off the top and a little bit at the bottom so it looks pleasing to the eye. Now what you can do is you can leave your cover like that, you can leave it plain. You don't have to decorate the front cover. I'm just going to show you how you can decorate the front cover with some fussy cut images. You can use digitals and I'm using the Woman's Weekly Home Journal cover and I'm going to fussy cut around these ladies and then glue them on. I'm using the Barely Art glue. I'm going to glue these ladies down in sections because if I glue all the way across the back of this paper where I start gluing is going to be dry before I get to the end so I'm going to glue this first bit down and then put it on my cover and then flip it over and from the back keep adding the glue and then just lay the cover on that and then just flatten it down with my bone folder. You can use your hand to flatten this down, but you just want it to lay nice and flat on your cover. Any bits that hang over the end, you just trim them off. So now I've got my fussy cut ladies on the cover. I'm gonna wait for the glue to dry. This glue dries pretty quick and I didn't put a real lot on. So it, it doesn't take very long to dry and I can fold that front over. Now I know as a beginner you may not have Distress Ink. All Distress Ink is is a ink pad that when you put it on an ink dauber it colours the edges. So if you've got one and you know what it is just go ahead and distress the ed edges if it needs it. Okay so now we're going to glue this pocket down on the back page. We only need to glue the top and the bottom because it's going to be a nice long pocket. So don't over glue, just put a little bit of glue on the top and make sure it's sealed. And that's there for later on when I can pop some extra paper in there. So that's the cover, completely finished. I can add more to it later or I can leave it like it is. So now we're done with the cover. I'm going to show you how to go through some books and choose your pages. What you do is you go through these books and you choose the pictures on those pages that look good to you. It's a junk journal. You've got to remember that when you're doing something creative, it doesn't have to make sense. So you can break all the rules and put anything you like inside this junk journal. Look how big these images are. They are not going to work in this smaller size journal. Just be aware in big pages like this, these images are going to be too big. This book here, Australia's Yesterdays, this is perfect for vintage junk journaling. Another thing you'll notice is some of your, some of your books 
have more sturdy paper than others. So be mindful of that as well. Like the Webster's Dictionary, for instance, it's got really fine paper. This one here, I love this side, but this side, not so. So I put this one aside and I use this as a cover. So you'll have to watch that video on how to make covers because I use this one in there. This is a Webster's Pictionary. So these pages are perfect for junk journals. So I pick one out of that. These pages are a little bit glossy. They're not overly, but they still are great for this junk journal. There's a lot of white space on here, so I can use that for journaling on. This is a typed recipe out of an old recipe book that was my mum's. Again, it's perfect. There's lots of colours in here. So if you see these sorts of things at the charity shop, get them. They make great journal pages. This is another recipe book that I have had since the 70s. The discoloration in it is fabulous. It's got some lovely illustrations on them. I just get my craft knife and cut them out because these pages are glued in. This was in Mum's stash, so I'm just going to fold this over and use it in the journal. If you see music books at the charity shop, grab them as well. They make excellent journal pages. Doesn't matter what the songs are. So now I've got a collection of pages. What we need to do now is fold them and size the pages to fit in the journal. I've got the cover here. Remember I said a minute ago there are no rules with junk journaling. You can have your pages hanging out the top, out the side, out the bottom. You do not have to have the pages neatly inside the cover. So this one here, for example, this page is a little shorter than the top, a little narrower than the width, and a little shorter than the bottom. So I can see a little bit of the cover all the way around the edge. That is what we're aiming for today. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you how to make a page guide. Having a page guide is such a big help when you're making a journal, especially when you're starting out. And actually, I still use one now. So use your cover to get the measurements to make a page guide. So just lay your cover down on the table and get a piece of paper. It can be one of the pages that you're going to use or it can be a blank piece of paper. Put your blank piece of paper over the top of your cover so that it's down a bit lower than the top and away from the edge on the right hand side here. Then fold it over towards your left hand and put a little crease there right on that fold line of your cover. That's your spine. Now put a crease down that page. So that page is now your front and back page. So I'm just going to put a ruler on that and I'm going to cut that little leftover piece off. So I put the page guide inside my cover and at the moment it's the same height as my cover. It's not as wide but it's the same height. You can leave it like this or you can trim a little bit off it so it's got a little bit more space at the top and the bottom. You can cut a little bit off at a time so you don't cut it too short. So now I've got it where I want it. But the fold line on my page has to sit on the fold line of my cover. It's only these three sides that need to be smaller. I, I just made one quickly in white paper. So going forward, you'll know whenever I use my page guide. Now I've got all my pages here ready to size. I'm just gonna give you an example of a page that's facing portrait and landscape. When you look at the page this way, 
this is in the portrait position. When you turn it on its side, it's the landscape position. When you fold it in half, you can put your page guide on it, and if that fits, you can use this in your junk journal. So I'm going to turn it back around to the portrait position, and I'm going to fold that in half, and I'm going to put my page guide on the inside of it so you can see it's that smidget narrower than my page guide. So I'm going to get this music sheet page and I'm going to fold it in half in the portrait position. Then I'm going to cut a little bit of that plain paper off the top, put my page guide on the music sheet and then mark it at the bottom with a pencil. I'm just using my knife, you use pencil. And then I'm gonna cut that off and I'm gonna sit that inside my cover. You can just put it on the table. It doesn't really matter where you put it for now. And see how it's a lot narrower than my cover? That doesn't matter at all. Keep going. Now this page here is a page I made for another journal that I didn't use. I sit it on my page guide and it's smaller than my page guide so I can use this in my journal as well. So now I'm grabbing the Pictionary pages. You do not have to fold these pages in half. See how I'm folding it more to the left with a, a bit left over on the right hand side? So I put my page guide on it. I can fold it next to this flower picture here and I don't waste any of the images doing it this way. I get to see them all. Then I put my guide back on to get the right height because it's going to be too tall. So I mark that and I'm going to trim that off. And for that little bit that's left over at the back, I can either fold that over and use it as a flip in my journal or I can cut it off altogether. But for now, I'm going to leave it there until I decide later on. Sometimes you might bring in a page that you've picked out of a book and you might change your mind, which I've done on this one. So I'm going to put it back. So then I get this page out. I look at it in portrait. I turn it around to the landscape. I'm not going to fold it fully in half again. I'm going to bring it back to the left a bit. Using the guide, I work out where the spine fold is going to be. And then I fold that leftover bit back on itself again. And I keep it there because it's part of the picture. You don't have to cut it all off. Now it's too tall, so I'm going to trim back some off the top and some off the bottom and that way I get to keep all of that image in the center and then I put that in the journal and at this minute I've just decided that I'm going to use that for my very first page because it looks good at the beginning of the cover. This is another old page out of my mum's cake decorating books and it's much smaller than my guide, so I'm not gonna fold it again perfectly in half. I have one side of it wider than the other side, and these smaller pages look beautiful in a junk journal. So you can stagger your pages. This one here, I'm gonna fold it not in half again, and I'm gonna sacrifice some of that border on the back page. This is a page that I've pulled out and it's still got the fold line intact. And instead of putting my ruler down the center on the inside and separating the pages, I'm going to close it up. I'm gonna cut that fold line off from the outside. And what that does is it gives you two clean cut lines on both pages. I'm going to turn it sideways and it's pretty much just the colors and and that that I'm more looking for for this page again I'm going to have one side wider than the other and then trim them both off 
so that my front and back is the same size. Put that in as well. Now I'm just going to stop for a second and show you that I'm getting some page creep. I'll show you what the page creep is and explain it a bit more after I finish putting some more pages in. You pretty much repeat, 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 repeat all the way through. Every book page is going to be a different size, a different image. So you just work around your images and work around the sizes and fold them where they look the best. Turn them over. One side of the book page might look better at the front than another. So you just keep on doing that. And like for this one here, you, you know, it's such an old page and it's a page that matches the cover. So I'm keeping that ad on the back. I'm folding it over, not cutting it off. This is an old folded up piece of paper that was in the Woman's Weekly Journal book. So I'm definitely keeping that and I'm gonna use it as one of the pages. And I'm gonna leave it in its folded state. Now the more I put in this journal, the more the pages that have been added to the outside of the group poke out. That's standard. If you started with all your pages exactly the same size, this will still happen. It's called page creep. The page there that you see, this white one, it's protruding out past the cover. So once I organize where I want my pages to be, I'm going to show you how to trim that off. So right now I haven't got my pages in order. I've just cut them out as I've picked them up and I've just put them inside of each other in the cover. So now I've had a chance to look through all of these pages. There's a lot of book pages in here. So if you want to actually journal in your junk journal, it might be a good idea to add some writing pages. So I'm, I'm going to do that. So I'm going to add some tea dyed paper, some plain paper, and I'm going to add some lined paper. Now your lined paper can be a little bit bigger and you can fold it over so you've got extra writing paper. You just need to trim it the same as all the other pages so that they fit inside the cover. Now we've got all our pages ready. It doesn't matter how many pages you've got. I've got 17 pages folded in half. That's 34 pages, which gives me 68 front and back. So now I'm just going to go through and I'm going to take all the pages back out and then I'm going to put them beside each other where I like them the best. Like I said to you, I want this to be my very first page. I'm going to put a couple of book pages, a couple of blank pages, a couple of book, a couple of blanks and I'm going to mix it up a little bit. I'm going to put something that the color looks similar together and then I'm going to you know like if it if I find something as I go along I'll change it I'll take that one out and I'll swap it with another page you know so it just works out if it doesn't you can take that whole page out and replace it with a brand new one there's my center page going in and I've just got to find somewhere for this really badly folded up piece and I think this one's a little bit long I think it's going to look better shorter so don't be afraid to shorten your pages after you've put them in order right now we've got to take care of the page creep so we're going to shorten the widest pages these pages in my left hand are all good. They do not have to be trimmed. So I'm going to put a peg on those pages. Put the peg in the left side again and I'm just going to shorten this page that's too long. So I'm just going to take it out of the groove and I'm going to shorten it 
a little bit less than it was poking out past the cover. And while it's out, I think it's still a bit high, so I'm going to cut a little bit of that white paper off. And I'm going to put the, the centre pages back in it. So I'll put it back in the book, go to the next page that's poking out too far, put the peg in the left side again, and I'm just going to shorten this page that's too long, put it back in and have a look. And if it's inside the cover, I can keep going. If it's still too long, I cut some more off. Put it back in and keep going. So you just keep doing that until all of your pages are inside the cover and not creeping out. There we go. We're all done. Now we're going to sew the pages to the cover and that's called binding. I love this part of the journal. This is the part where you put the pages into the cover. As a beginner, there's a few things you will need to know. This one here is a pretty heavy sort of, it's like a, it's not string, this one is a Stampin' Up! cord. So as a beginner, you might not have access to this sort of thing. But you never know. Somewhere in your mum's drawer or out back, you might have a piece of cord, something like this. And on the inside, it looks like that. So you need a little bit bigger hole to use cord like this. And you need to use a bigger needle. So to sew that in, I use this big needle here with a really big eye. Same with this one here. This is hemp. This here, this was in my mum's stash. It's hemp cord. I don't know what the thickness is or anything. So I just use that again with that bigger needle. So you can use thicker strings. Right, so I've got a string here. You could use that. This is, uh, because I'm in Australia, you can buy a string anywhere. You can buy this from Woolworths, Coles, Big W, the $2 shop, Bunnings. I wouldn't go getting anything too much bigger than this. It'll just be too heavy. So just bear in mind, between here and this would be the maximum I would recommend. You can use your everyday string. This string here is something that you could get at the shopping center where you get your groceries as well. So you can use this as well. Same with this one here. This one's a bit stiffer. It's not as soft as this and it's more round. You could use that. You can use embroidery floss. I use this embroidery floss a lot and I keep it the whole six strands. If you haven't used embroidery floss before, it's got six strands and you can divide them. So if you pull that, you can take two away and be left with four. You can take three away and be left with three. You can divide it into however many strands you want, but leave the whole six together and it comes in as many colors as you can imagine. You can match it to your journal. What you can also do is go to the charity shop and get things like this. You can get string from the charity shop too. I'd, I'd say that's probably where this was from, the charity shop. This one here was in Mum's stash, so it's really old. This one's no good to use, and I'll tell you why. As soon as I pull on my stitches, it breaks. So check what you're going to use, if you find something that's old, check it before you use it because it could just break as soon as you pull your stitches. And when we start sewing, I'll show you that. Here's this one. This is like a crochet thread in a cotton. And that one's not going to break. So that one is pretty good. I could use that. And I, I like this because it's old and it's got some discoloration. This one here is like a cotton embroidery thread. 
it's very thin but I could use it and it's very strong so and that type of crochet thread or embroidery thread that's used in slow stitching is good to use as well so just be careful if your thread is very weak don't use it to bind in like this so I think I'll go just with the dark brown just so you can see when I show you how to do this stitch before I start sewing I'll show you what you need to put your holes we're going to put three holes through all of these pages that come out through the cover you can use this pokey tool here which is for clay modeling this is a book binders pokey tool very sharp and this is just a pokey tool that i found in mum's stash so i'd say these are available on the internet somewhere the reason for these pokey tools is that they pierce a hole in the spine for the needle to pass through easily it's like a pre-drilled hole that makes it easier for sewing if you try and use your needle to push through there for sewing yeah it'll work if you haven't got a pokey tool you can do that but it's just a little bit harder on your fingers and it's a bit harder to push through so if you haven't got a pokey tool you can use your needle if you've got a big chunky needle the bigger the better say so something like that and it's got a little bit of a, a spear point you can use something like that to pierce your hole so don't worry if you haven't got a pokey tool we are also going to need a couple of clamps as a beginner I suggest that you use a clamp and what we use them for is to hold your pages and your cover together like this so we clamp them together so that they don't move around also it's a good idea to have your pages here pushed right in to the cover there like that I actually get a ruler and I tap that ruler inside all my pages and make sure that they're pushed right into those fold lines all together you got to make sure they're all up the right way so that's my front of the cover up the right way that's up the right way and all the way through just double check all your pages are facing the right way once all your pages are facing the right way and you know that they're sitting where you want them if you come here and you go right oh I think this page here is too tall now's the time to take out that page there and shorten it a little bit you do this right now before you start sewing there's no point sewing it in and going oh I wish I'd have shortened that page it's very long so you come in and shorten it now so I'm going to put it back in there and I'm going to tap all my pages again doesn't matter how many times you fiddle around with this it is really worth it to fiddle around so now it's not poking out at the top or the bottom it's looking much better because it, it was poking out too much for me so now again I've made sure that fold line is pushed right in I'm going to clamp that there and I'm going to clamp that there it's held into place then I'm going to find the center of my book so if you hear someone say I'm going to eyeball it that's just judging it by eye or you can use a center ruler this has got a zero in the middle which I can then just put a four there and a four there the zero in the middle and I can work out where the center is by using a center ruler so my center is right there then I'm going to almost close my journal with the all in place and I'm going to push that all all the way through 
till it comes out right on that fold line there and I'm going to give it a good push so it comes right up to the thickest part of the awl and makes a decent hole. Now if you were using a needle you would do exactly the same. Almost close your book, push it through until it comes out that side. Now for the second and the third hole I'm going to do the same. I'm going to come down roughly an inch from the top, maybe an inch and a quarter. And I'm just going to almost close my book and push my awl until it comes out and leaves a good size hole. I'm going to match where I've come out here and come up from the bottom and push that through there as well. Now I'm going to leave these clamps on here. They're going to help keep those holes in place. If you move the clamps, what's going to happen is each page will move and when you go to put that needle in there, it's not going to find every single hole and go straight through. So you need to leave that there to help you with the sewing step. So let's start the sewing step. For the sewing, you can do it two ways. You can start sewing on the outside. It's exactly the same stitch, only you start on the outside to get this finish and you start on the inside to have the bow on the inside. So to show you how much thread you need first, you need three lengths of the height of your journal. So one, till you've got two, pull it out again till you've got three lengths. Cut that off. Get your big eye needle and then feed those six strands into that large eye of your needle. If you can't do that for the life of you, you'll just need to use a needle threader. To start sewing, you remember I poked my hole not like that with my pages open. If you try and open your pages and put your needle in that hole, it won't go through because you've moved the hole. So you've got to almost close your pages and then have a peek through the inside and then push that needle through and it will find that hole easily. Keep pulling it until there's a tail left at the end here. Get another little clamp and just clamp that onto the tail so that while you're sewing, you don't accidentally pull that all the way through. That's going to act as a stopper for you. Then we're going to come up to, I'm going to turn the journal around and we're going to come up to the top hole here again with the journal almost closed I'm going to find that top hole and bring the needle through to the inside so I'm going to have one long stitch on the outside then I'm going to skip that middle hole I'm going to come down to the bottom hole over the top there like that I'm going to almost closed my pages so the needle goes straight out through that hole and now I've got one long stitch on the inside with that little fella still sitting there like that. Now I've got to come back through this hole here where there's already one stitch. Because there's six strands of embroidery thread here I don't want to put my needle through that strand like that. If you do that, you're not going to be able to finish your stitch properly. So what I want to do is go beside that stitch there, that embroidery thread, and just come in that big hole right beside it. I want to stay away from that piece there. Now I'm through to the inside and I can pull that through freely and I've got two long stitches 
on the outside here. They're a bit loose at the moment, but we'll fix those up when we pull these threads here. I've got two stitches on the same side. I'm going to put this needle under this long stitch here and come out so I've got one on either side of that long stitch. I'm going to take my clamp off and I'm also going to take the needle off my thread. I'm going to get these threads and long ways up my journal I'm just going to give it a gentle tug and this is why I said to you a minute ago don't use that weak thread because when you do this that weak thread would have just broke you would have went oh my god I just done all that sewing for the first time and then it broke so you need to do that then fold your book closed and check that they're tight and they're not they're still loose so you need a little bit more work yet you need to get those threads tight so we're going to pull this thread here and pull this thread here until that outside thread becomes tight and I'm going to hold that there and I'm going to check it again that's much tighter all right now do the same on this side pull it so now I know that those outside stitches are tight I'm going to check here that my pages are not peeking over the top and they're not peeking over the bottom and I'm going to tie a knot over that long stitch so now that long stitch has been divided in two by that knot that I just tied over the center of it I'm going to tie another one and I'm going to cut off the other excess piece and leave it there what you can also do is cut it off short here now we can take these off these clamps here and fold that closed and we've got these two lovely neat and tidy stitches on the outside as opposed to having the bow on the outside it's exactly the same but in reverse so to do this one I started sewing by putting my needle from the inside to the outside first to do this one start sewing putting your needle from the outside to the inside first so your strings are going to be left hanging out here that is the only difference between the two otherwise the stitch is identical so now we've got these little gaping holes here all I do is pinch them together and close them up so you just use your fingernail and just close them holes up now I've just shown you how to make your first journal how cool is that you don't have to make them in these vintage styles you can make them in a more contemporary style you don't have to use text in the background you can use scrapbook paper you can use whatever cardstock you've got you just need something that's a little protective for the cover you don't want to use a light paper for your cover so what do you think are you going to make a junk journal i hope you do i'm confident that if you follow my instructions you'll be able to make a junk journal like this it doesn't matter how many pages you put in it doesn't matter what size you make it whatever size that relates to you whatever looks good to you you choose keep moving forward and you'll end up getting it right to practice making a junk journal this way before you start the hardcover journals with the spine enjoy the flip through and if you have any questions in the comments below and don't forget this is not the only video that i've made for you as a beginner go check out my other videos on how to make easy covers i've made 10 easy styles for you to have a look at and there's another one on pages another on pockets all perfect for you as a beginner